good time to start. So first of all, if you take photos, please share it on Twitter, and you know the hashtag, right? Hash ah, no one has told you. Hashtag Drupal South is where you could follow the like pictures and event and connect to people who are in the uh, same uh, event or maybe the same venue. And also, if you take a photo, it's good if you could just tweet it. Uh, so maybe, okay, they don't have a Twitter, a Twitter hashtag, uh, the Twitter mention here. That's fine. So hashtag Drupal South, and I think we also, yeah, but, but you, okay, Sparksy is, yeah, Sparksy is there. I will, I will tweet right now, so if you follow a live, uh, the Twitter stream, you will see the uh, answer. Right, ready to go? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool, I will. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. Let's go there. Morning, everyone. Morning. Hello. Thanks for coming along to our session on uh, Modular Week, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the open source. My name's Dave Sparks, um, and it's my, my pleasure and my privilege to introduce the, uh, some members of the Sparks team who have come along to talk about our experiences with this, um, this little initiative that we kicked off. And the clicker stops working. And that's the talk, folks. Well, going on Possibly, possibly. There should be a next. <laughs> next button. <laughs> Welcome to our talk this morning. So what did we do? Um, so <laughs> what did we do? Uh, we, we asked our questions, uh, asked ourselves that question a lot um, as we went through the process. Um, we came up with this initiative uh, three months ago, um, possibly on a Friday night or definitely after work and uh, definitely over some beers. Um, but the idea was one person pushes up uh, one contrib candidate at least one a week, every week, for the rest of the year. Um, keep it simple, right? We thought that's pretty simple. How hard can it be? Uh, one contrib a week. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> another question we asked ourselves a lot, uh, why did we do that? Um, why did we commit ourselves, commit our company to that course of action? Um, well, uh, we've been doing Drupal since 2007. Um, we've always worked hard to try and give back, um, sponsoring conferences and meetups, um, individuals contributing on their own. Um, 2014, uh, 15, we organised the D8 sprints in Auckland and Wellington. Um, but collectively, the, the overall effort and the impact was far short of where we wanted to be. Local community sprints, getting people together to, to push Contrib up, um, that was really hard. Um, a little bit discouraging sometimes, not much progress. People who are used to getting stuff done and, and you know, making the code fly found it really frustrating to not make the code fly. Uh, client work, you know, we're a professional services agency, client work usually takes priority. Um, I've been selling web dev by the hour for 20 years um, and we're a pretty classic client services business. Um, we always felt like a small business and, and not putting the client work first, um, it felt like a risk. And change is hard. Uh, you know, we've been around 11 years. Um, some people on the team have been there the whole time. We've got a number of people who worked here, five, seven years. Um, how do you go about changing a culture, changing habits, um, especially dev habits, um, without throwing it all out the window? You know, I didn't feel like uh, rebooting my company and starting again, um, but how do you introduce some incremental change that actually takes and makes a difference? Um, we tried lots of different things to make changes, and the small changes always fall off the fastest. 
how do we do it? How do we do this Modular Will Be Initiative? Um, well, it's, uh, it's my prerogative to, uh, to leave that to the team to explain. Works. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is a tech guy. All you need is a tech guy. G'day. Um, I'm Dan. I'm a Drupal.org moderator, documentation maintainer, stuff like that. I spend a lot of time in the queues um, talking with contributors from all over the world. Um, I spend hours a week trying to get Drupal folk, contributors, potential contributors, to collaborate, to clean up their code, and to find ways to plug things together. Um, I bat back a bunch of project applications saying, yeah, that's cool, but why don't you just join forces with that other thing? So with that in mind, our tagline probably makes you cringe. <laughs> We've got lots of modules. We don't need another module. But the point is that adding yet another module is not really the goal. There's too many modules out there. In Drupal, it's long been the case that just choosing which module out of the plethora that there are out there is actually one of the real skills that we bring to the table. We don't need to add to that confusion. We've got lots. We've got thousands in Drupal 7, thousands more coming up in Drupal 8. If you're watching the queue or the tweets or whatever, there's something like five new Drupal 8 modules coming out every day. We don't need another module. That's not even counting the sandboxes, the unofficial stuff, the things that go up on GitHub. And that's a lot of modules. We've got a lot of modules as well. I went through the Sparks code base and from all of our legacy clients aggregated over the last decade at least, 4,400 different custom modules. Not all of them are custom, some of them are devs or branches of genuine contrib stuff. If you're here for the um, talk that was just given previously, they talked about 160 different, different custom modules in one dockroot code base. That's pretty scary, but we're just as bad. We've got so many modules out there. So there's chaos out there. <laughs> There's a large amount of each to their own. You know, everybody's fighting for their own thing. We're a medium-sized dev company, I guess. By Australian standards, probably a small one. Um, and I think this is seen in many other agencies. It's certainly evident in the sites that we inherit from other folk, other agencies. People have written their module once, dropped it into the project, and left it there to rot. Um, this is only going to get better if we start to cooperate. We already have the code. It's not a supply problem. It's a distribution problem. We need to set it free. So, module a week is not necessarily about writing new modules. In fact, that's the bottom of the list. It's about liberating the existing ones. We need results. We need deliverables. So I started with the manifesto. We want measurable, achievable targets. We need this to socialize it to the team, to say, have you succeeded, have you not? We needed it to socialize it to the producers to say, we want to put some time aside for this guy to do this, and at the end you will get a result. So the results are things that will achieve progress. If you take an existing private or written once for client project, make it open source, boom, you've got to win. Somebody gets the yays on the grip channel that we talk on. If you take a Drupal 7 module, make it a Drupal 8 upgrade, that's a win. Boom, we're winning. If you take something that's in dev out there, maybe in contrib land, maybe it needs a bunch of, a bit, of, a bit of testing, a bit of pushing, a bit of thumbs up, RTBC on it. Take a dev to stable, we're winning. If you take a sandbox, make it promoted. You know, some of us already have sandboxes and don't really feel like it's quite ready for the public. It's okay, get somebody else to test it, get it promoted. We are winning. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we wanted to do. However, it's hard. The hard stuff is not the code. We're already good at that. We've got a bunch of professionals, PHP developers from way back. Writing code is not hard. The hard stuff was shifting to a reusable by default sort of a mindset. And that's what it's all about. So there's a few key points that will actually help us. The first one, 
you've got to get it up there, you've got to get it out there, you've got to get it public, you've got to get it seen, you've got to get it witnessed. It's got to be public or it's not open source. The second thing is, the stuff that we wrote was dirty, dusty and grimy. We needed to polish it up, we needed to make it shiny, we needed to make it attractive, get attention to it. This is a really important part of um, the open source side of things, often neglected. You can't just put it up for free and say, yeah, it's there. You've got to say, and it's good, and you want it, and you want to pick it up and play with it. Make it shiny and chrome, polish it up, be proud of your code. That's something that doesn't always happen with stuff that you've just written one, once for a client. Stuff that you don't expect anybody else to see, doesn't happen. And the even harder part is pushing it through the issue queue. Uh, you've got to write documentation, you've got to write explanations, you've got to write instructions on how to test, instructions on what it's supposed to do. If you're going through the full Drupal.org project process, we know that's pretty painful. Um, if you've got any project application stuff in the queue, talk to me, I want to help you push it through. Um, I do have that magic button, but I will be hard on you at first. So pushing it through the issue queue is really, really hard. So all that hard stuff, we did do. We have team members who each have their own story. They've each had a little different journey. So I'm going to hand that over to Diwa. Hello, everyone. My name is Diwa, and I'm a member of the Sparks backend development team from Auckland. I've been a member of Drupal.org since I was 16. I'm actually a second generation Drupal developer. And I have over 150 commits to contrib modules. While working for Sparks, I've picked up maintainership for two abandoned modules and also uh, contributed to full projects myself. So while we've been neglecting open source contributions a little bit, they haven't been entirely forgotten. So I was the first to volunteer for the module a week challenge. The main targets of our efforts were to find and open source contrib modules, which we had already built. And in my case, we had already built a completely custom implementation for the Photoswipe library for Sabara New Zealand. And yes, it was another slideshow module. Mm -hmm. At the time, our designer had come up with something that the existing Drupal implementation of the library didn't quite support. We were pressed for hours, so we went for a quick custom solution with a couple of theme hooks and a few JavaScript tweaks. So for module a week, I decided it, it was best to extract those customizations, create a dependency on the existing Photoswipe module, and so Photoswipe Extras was born. And I'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. Um, extracting and rewriting the code in a usable manner, I'm gonna go back one, sorry. <laughs> extracting and rewriting the code in a reusable manner took a whole lot more effort than the initial implementation. And while looking for the best way to do this, I realized there were a few things that had been done that weren't exactly by the book. So it was good that we decided to clean this up before something went wrong. Now, it was Friday, where's the code? Dan had to remind me that Drupal sandboxes are free. It's better to have something up that doesn't work than absolutely nothing at all. And part of the process was to get our development out in the open. I needed a good reminder there. Uh, another tip that I can share is um, I started using the issue queue on my sandbox to track what I was working on and what I needed to work on, and the team started using that to give feedback as well. So before I move on, here's the, oh, starting halfway through the GIF here, sorry, I'll wait for it, there we go. Before we move on, here's the Photoshop Extras module in action on Subaru. You can see the masonry uh, in there, the zoom in on click when it opens, there's a custom toolbar on the right hand side, um, and we have video playing supported as well via YouTube. And all of these things were not supported in the existing, uh, existing uh, Drupal module at the time. So with the sandbox and the basic features in place, it was time to get some feedback. So within minutes of sharing my sandbox URL with the team, the feedback started pouring in. Uh, can you expand on the module description? What's, uh, what does it do? What makes it different? Where's the readme? Uh, yeah, I'd actually forgotten to write a readme. Um, and uh, people coming back, hey, I've done code review, automated uh, code review, uh, you know, nice looking through functions, saying, hey, that was a nice thing you picked up there. Here's something else that needs a little bit more work. Now, the Photoswap Extras module requires a library. It has a dependency. There's also a couple more modules that were needed for other features like masonry and video. This is where Simply Test Me came in. I could provide a link to the dev team and everyone, uh, including the managers, the producers, and even the uh, designers. Uh, could get a vanilla Drupal 7 site up and running with all the tools to get testing. Um, it 
took a little bit of figuring out how to get the URLs working nicely, so I'll share that with you now. Uh, you replace name with your uh, project name or your sandbox ID. Uh, you can add as many modules as you need via query parameters, especially handy for things that aren't dependencies but that will expand on your module. Uh, and uh, also patches, you'll definitely be wanting to test patches. Uh, very good for simply testing. Finally, some key things that I'm taking away from this experience so far. As I mentioned at the beginning, get those sandboxes, sandboxes up early, uh, keep track of your development history, commit early, commit often. It's hard to do contra by yourself. It'll take others about 10 seconds to pick up on obvious things you missed, and they'll also find gaps in your documentation without any effort because they don't have the burden of prior knowledge. And lastly, try to do things right the first time. It's a lot harder to extract code later and open source it, and once you get into the right mentality, you'll be planning and writing your code with contributing in mind, and you're gonna save yourself lots of time and headaches down the road. Now, a sixth member of our team was supposed to be here to share his experience as one of a few who did their first open source Drupal contribution as part of this experience. Uh, he wasn't able to be here. Um, so Dan's gonna come in here and fill in those gaps before we move on to hear Hayden's perspective. So I get to put on a different hat and say, hey, I'm standing in for Jing. Jing's another one of our Auckland developers. Um, he hadn't done open source at all um, before, which is why I think his story is an interesting one to share. Um, he, has, he took the shortcut to promotion. Um, if you're aware of the Drupal project issue queue, um, promotion can be hard and it can get, a, get pretty tricky. He succeeded. Uh, what he did was he took um, an existing piece of work that had already been written for the client, or different clients, two or three times. The fact that the same thing had been written for the same for different clients two or three times was a bit of the problem. So he successfully discovered what the problem was. I'm going to skip over his slides, can't do them justice. But what he did do was identify that this was rife for plug-in. This was ripe for something that should and could and should always have been reused. What happened in Jing's story is that he succeeded. He took an existing module so, and normally would stop here. We've written something for the client, it works, it goes into the code base, never gets touched again. This is actually the beginning of his journey. What happened after that was he got it up into a Drupal.org sandbox, success. He, uh, we got some real user testing, we got some tire kicking. Um, a few of the other team members sort of like said, do this, don't do this, said, this is actually pretty cool. We're doing a payment gateway. This, we need security reviews. You need to know it works every time. You need to know you've got some really good error checking. So a couple of eyes on that really helped. He got his project application review in there. A bit intimidating, a bit slow sometimes. He got it in there. He did it right. He took feedback. People around the world started looking at his code. Plugins, they're really hard to test. He got some testing done. He got approval from the previous module maintainer, and this is where the magic happened. There was already some payment gateway stuff for this um, PXPay, DXPay, um, for Drupal 7. He did it for Drupal 8. He collaborated, we socialized the issues, we talked in stream and out stream with the original module maintainer, got the thumbs up, big win. He got promoted. He got promoted to being an official Drupal.org project maintainer from woe to go. Huge success there. That's Jing's story. Everybody's got their own stories. Making it happen, making people work together, that's the story. We socialised it. We talked to other people. We didn't just make the code, didn't just put it up there and say it's cool. We socialised it. And getting people to work together, well, that's one of Hayden's jobs. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Hayden, I'm a senior producer at Sparks, and I'm here to speak a little bit about what it's taken to manage the process of creating a module a week. How we've sold the concept to the team, and how we've worked differently with our clients while still paying the bills at the end of each month. Now about 10 or 11 years ago I had my first taste of Drupal, and I was on the other side of the table then. Um, you know, I'd just been into a demonstration with some developers that were providing some sites for us, and they were talking about nodes and taxonomies and views, the first time we'd heard this. And I walked out of that meeting just not understanding anything they'd talked about. And it's what you don't want from a client, zero understanding. 
At Sparks, we try our best to speak in plain English to our clients, understanding their requirements, asking what they want to achieve, why they want to achieve it, and then crafting some nice code and some pretty sweet pixels to deliver what they ask for. Now, for five, six, seven years, our clients felt special during this phase. They thought we were these code magicians churning out special websites just for them, sites that were unique and a point of difference. And in reality, they were, and that's a problem. I think we've got a super talented dev team at Sparks. We've created some strange and magical sites using Drupal, from home energy rating systems to one of the first media paywalls in New Zealand. There's some cool stuff. But the problem was that we were often reinventing the wheel somewhere in the process on almost all of our projects. In hindsight, our Achilles heel had been the fact that we were using open source, but we hadn't fully embraced the open source mindset in our dev team. Our dev teams were working in a fairly siloed manner. They were looking at the requirements that I provided from the client. They'd go away themselves and look at a module or a set of modules to try and achieve the result. And if they couldn't find something themselves, they'd create some custom code. Any collaboration we did was often after the coding had been done. That meant the feedback they were getting was fairly one-dimensional. It was based on the code work that had already happened and how that achieves the goal, rather than starting before we started coding and trying to find a nice way to do a bit of reusable code. Now, getting a team to fundamentally change their approach to writing code isn't easy. I'm not saying the producer role at the start of this process is like herding cats, but let's just say it took some time to get everyone singing from the same song sheet. There's still an individual research phase we go through, but at the earlier stage, we try and get the dev team to work together. As we've sort of mentioned, we use Glip as a messaging tool across the company, and we use it really well. We have specific channels per job and per project, like Modular Week. At this point, the devs get together in Glip to discuss what we have to achieve, the modules that they've looked at, the modules that we have available in our own sector distribution of Drupal, and then we work through to try and find a solution. We'll see if there is scope to create a module that will be useful to a wider audience if it's not there. An important part of our thinking at this stage is the necessity to create a new module. If there's nothing available and we aren't sure if there's a wider audience for a new module, we'll go back and look at the client's requirements what they want to achieve, and see if there's a way to convince them to do it differently that will get the same or at least a similar result. Clients can be understanding when you explain the downstream costs of hacking or maintaining custom code. As a producer, it's important to give your client just the right amount of information to let them make educated decisions. They don't have to understand the code logic, but in plain English, the functional process, the benefits as well as the all-important time and money factor. I recently had my first real-world experience of Modular Week changing our day-to-day -day dev process. We needed to incorporate the Google Places API into a web form for Sabaru of New Zealand, and this wasn't available out of the box. So the team decided to create a module that would expose the API field as a web form component. You can see an action there. I explained to the client how we were going to handle the dev, and that it would add a day or so to the timeline, because that's always pretty important to them that would create the module independently to the site and then integrate it back as we would any other con contra module. They were on board, and they're a really cool client, and they were strangely excited to be contributing to our new approach. They understood that on many occasions, they've benefited directly from contributed modules being available to add new functionality to their site. And this was their chance to contribute back. I caught up with a client last week, and they said they felt a bit like a patron of code. They were able to pay for work that was going to be given back for others to use. It's a great thing when a client has the understanding to come on the journey with us, but that's not always going to happen, and that's a simple fact. Clients don't often care about a CMS. They don't care about the code, the way it's written, and in many cases I can appreciate that. I'm not going to try and force that information on them. But if we're able to impart a little understanding of open source, why we're working this way, and the big picture benefits for them, it helps the client make good decisions and allows us to make maintainable and sustainable websites. So next up, I'll call Marco for his, his own unique bit of a journey. Hi, everyone. My name is Marco, and I'm working in Sparks for three years as a back-end developer. So as Dan said before, uh, we have too many modules out there. And why we have had modules? Well, um, um, you can, you can um, I'm going back because it's interesting, that, that part. Uh, 
I want to tell you why you should still contribute with a module or a sandbox. For example, uh, my recent contribution uh, was um, a module called SVG Taxonomy, and uh, this contribution is from a solution I made uh, a couple of years ago, maybe one year ago, for a client which was looking for a, an interactive map of New Zealand with a region to be used to filter uh, products over the country by the region. So, and I've got uh, what I think is a beautiful idea, and instead of writing a custom code uh, for achieving that, I've used built-in tools. Uh, I've used taxonomy terms, and um, I've created a vocabulary. I had a custom, a custom field uh, for uh, my uh, SVG markup, and then just adding uh, to this vocabulary uh, the regions as uh, terms, and for each region, the piece of uh, SVG markup in it, I was able, using views and some tricks with the uh, um, field wrappers and markups, to uh, render the whole country. And all of these, uh, and you can play with this, straight with this markup to make the region linkable and things like that. And you can easy, easily interact with your views using Ajax uh, and uh, um, do what you want actually without writing any line of code. But this is a great idea, I thought it was a good solution for this client. It does work, you can see it is working, it's there. Uh, you can find uh, some uh, uh, example uh, or reference of that project on the uh, uh, sandbox in Drupal. Uh, but anyway, I've got frustrated when I decide to share it. How to share something, uh, how to share a module uh, when it's made without code. This is, was my, my, my frustration. Well, you can still do that. So, um, you can contribute a module as a concept. So, you can create, uh, uh, you can contribute with a sandbox, uh, with, for example, you can, you can build a wizard module which does some automation con to configure other modules, or you can uh, uh, create a module which does some uh, example contents for other existing modules. Maybe you can flick some dependencies to get these modules when you enable your uh, example content modules, or you can use Futures. Futures is the, especially in Drupal Center, is the best tool to achieve that, and, uh, or you can put out a sandbox uh, just to tell about your idea. So the sandbox could be something to uh, explain uh, um, a method to achieve something, you can put, uh, or you can contribute with just documentation or whatever. So don't be afraid to contribute. Uh, is there, is uh, Drupal.org is also there and works very well. You have also benefits in that. Uh, you can have uh, free tools, as we said, and as, we, and as you know maybe, uh, you have with your sandbox, it comes with a Git repository, you have a beautiful issue queue system, you can have comments, feedbacks, and other things. Plus, it's easier to share and reuse. If you are okay with your uh, module, will be easier to be plugged in another project. So, and also you can um, improve your uh, credits and reputation in Drupal, of course, if you got promoted or just to have an extra uh, credit in, on your profile about your contribution. And also you can add feedback and reviews from uh, other people or in our case, internal feedbacks. <laughs> But yes, these are the benefits uh, in, to do that. And uh, if you want to try this uh, module, this is the sandbox page, and you can use the simple test me uh, link to uh, try it on the flight on simple test me. Thank you very much for your attention. So, uh, so how's it going, you might ask, and, uh, and, and thanks for asking. Um, it's going really well. 
Um, we've posted great activity um, from something that's bubbled along as a grudging activity that happens in the background. Um, Contrib has moved to the front of our dev process, um, and not just our dev process, but everything else we do. Our project management approach, how we talk to clients, uh, how we cost jobs, and how we manage jobs. For me, as a, as a manager and a business owner, the most exciting thing is um, in 12 weeks, um, a change in thinking right across the team. Um, this is a company that's been chugging along, doing much the same thing for 10, 11 years. Um, we threw this challenge out there, and um, within three months, uh, a revolution. Amongst the dev team, um, a very mixed uh, level of confidence uh, working on Drupal.org, um, putting themselves out there in open source. Um, confidence up you know, a million percent. Um, well done, guys. It's, it's amazing to see uh, people rise to a challenge and change how they do stuff, and change how they've been doing stuff for 10 years. Um, here's our, uh, our very sophisticated tracker that we use. Um, uh, Google Doc. Um, we thought 12 weeks, we'll try and get 12 things done. Um, at the moment, you can see uh, it's scrolling down. We've got about 22 things in our queue at the moment um, from those 12 weeks, and uh, including stuff promoted all the way through. And there's a backlog of people wanting to add stuff to this. I'm not pushing them along, right? I'm not chasing them with a stick saying contrib, contrib. Um, this is all coming up from the grassroots, and it's happening. Anything that happens without any input and effort from me, that's a win. <laughs> are we happy? Um, you know, are we happy as a team? Um, yeah, I'm super stoked. Um, you know, I think it's fantastic. Um, Sure, there's been a lot of stress. Um, it hasn't been easy rewiring how we do things. Um, you know, it hasn't all been hearts and, uh, and, and hugs. Um, there has been some swearing, um, and there has been some messages typed in all caps. Um, but, you know, um, but no more than usual, right? It's just about different stuff, right? It's transferred the, the discussion from, uh, you know, uh, reviewing and assessing the client's wisdom and intelligence um, to talking about collaboration and code dev. You know? It's brought the stress inside, but it's made uh, us solve the problems inside as well. Uh, uh, most importantly, well, quite importantly, from my point of view, um, the commercial imperative has been met, right? You know, we've been going for a long time. Um, we're a client services business. We're a cash flow business. We depend on people to pay us for our work, right? So I can pay these guys for their work. Um, happy clients, paying the bills, awesome. Um, but I think the, the, the surprise to me, the, you know, the unexpected benefit was that uh, although the, front, uh, the work is, is more front loaded with discussion, um, the code comes out better at the end. Um, less rework, less refactoring, less errors, less client complaints. So uh, from a commercial point of view, uh, very effective. Um, and again, uh, unexpected. I thought it would be a grind. I thought that uh, in three months, we'd get stuff done, um, but that, that it wouldn't necessarily generate momentum. You know, my experience is that change takes a long time and a lot longer than you think it would. But with this, um, you know, the right time, the right idea, and, and the right mindset from the crew, um, immediate gains. Um, better everything in a few short weeks. Better code, better code reviews, um, happier clients, all good. <laughs> what next for us? Well, um, <clears throat> like puppies, Contrib isn't just for Christmas. We originally said we were going to carry this through to the end of the year um, and see how it went. Um, 12 weeks in already, um, all our new work is getting done like this, right? Everything uh, from client discussions to specs to costings is based around all our code being contrib or core, right? No more custom code. Um, and that's a big deal for us after 10, 11 years. 
We have been around for a long time. We have a lot of sites. We've got 100 or 150 sites uh, kind of under our maintenance. Um, sometimes we don't touch those sites for years. Sometimes the, the clients have spent thousands of dollars building those sites. Um, and they don't expect to spend thousands more. Um, but our goal is over the next kind of uh, six months, transition all our legacy support into the same approach, right? If we're supporting your site and we're supporting custom code, that stops. Um, there's an end of life on that. There's a sunset on that approach. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it has been such a win for us, right? Non-trivial win, and we're just like, fuck it. We're not supporting those sites anymore. Um, you know, we still need the money from our clients, right? Because, um, you know, these guys don't contribute their time. <laughs> Some of us do. <laughs> no, that's, to be fair, they do. To be fair, they do. Um, but yeah, you know, we're transitioning all our legacy support into the same approach. Um, whoops, don't need that slide. Because, um, you know, for me as a business owner, um, and for us as a team, um, doing the module of the week initiative um, is not just to feel good for the community. We're not just doing this to support Drupal. We're not doing this out of any kind of great altruistic desire to give, you know. We have a lot of charity clients, um, but we're not a charity. Uh, I feel that, that um, with, with Drupal 8 here and now, uh, the way the web is going, the way that Drupal is going, um, this, is a, this is a commercial imperative, right? If we don't do this, if we don't take this opportunity and, and grasp the nettle and do it, then we will not be here for year 12 and year 13. Um, it is not uh, credible for a single developer you know, coming one off the ruck to, uh, to build a substantial and significant website anymore. Uh, we've benefited a lot from the Drupal community. It's changed uh, how we do things and what we do. And I think that unless you understand and accept that you need to work like this to have a future um, in the web world, um, to be a champion for Drupal um, as a great solution, um, building websites for clients, um, you just have to do this, and we're committing to it. 2017, no more custom code. Yeah. And that's that. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, yes. Hello. Inspiring stuff. Um, you touched on it briefly, but how have your clients reacted to this? Uh, sometimes we don't tell them. <laughs> The clients that we do discuss it with, they, are, they know, right, we, we sell Drupal and we sell authentic in the Drupal way, right? Not everyone comes to us asking for a Drupal website. They just come to us, I want, I want a website, bro. Um, and, but we explain to them that it's, it's core, it's contrib, it's open source. We're using code that's put out there and we take the time, you know, maybe over a coffee or a beer uh, to explain to them how that ecosystem works and why it's good for them. Um, and I think that it's hard to touch on this, you know, everything in a, in a, in a short talk. Um, but the key thing is it's not just a dev initiative, right? It's not just saying, hey, you devs, you do, you do this, and the rest of the company trucks on the same as before. Um, you have to filter everything back up to how you um, broker that initial engagement and how you cost the job with the client and how you explain to them how the costs are going to fall. Um, and if you get it right, it's better. And you say, hey, it's better. And they go, sweet, we'll do it. And if they say no, missed the job. There's no shortage of work around. So. Hello. I just want to say thank you for starting this great issue. It's really good to see you. There is a lot of stuff. Well, I've got a lot of modules and people want to say, oh, Modern maintenance yeah. Then you got shown yeah. um, with, with the, the like you're going to put everything on Drupal at all that you work on. That, that's your no custom code, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So what if it's like commercially sensitive stuff? Uh, it's really well. We, I mean, we have had this issue, right? We've got clients who've got like, hey, here's this big NDA, right? or you know, government clients who have a lot of security um, concerns. But I don't see that um, 
that there is anything in the code that is, um, you know, that is uh, commercially sensitive. Uh, you know, I, I yeah. I we're not really arrogant enough to think that we're doing anything that no one else can do. Um, I don't think that there is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It, we've had a lot of talks about this. It's, it's a big one. Yeah, um, the reality is there will always be a little bit of that. Um, what we have is, is guidelines. You know, no yeah. custom code isn't in the ever, ever, ever. Um, there will always be something that just doesn't fit in the box for whatever silly reason, and you commit it and you say, the client made me do this, and maybe that shouldn't necessarily go up. Yeah. Um, there, we have encountered these, you know, client thinks that they're a special snowflake and their code, their, the thing that you're building is theirs, that will always be a reality. Um, we'll address that as, as we come to it. Um, it's, it's not a, a mandate, it's a we really, really want them not to think that they're special. Yeah. And putting back to what you said at the start, like, to find the body, so the fact is, the second you install Drupal, that's like a serious step in the right direction. Yeah. 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 And it's, I mean, it, again, it's that, that commercial discussion, right? Because a client is buying a website off you but then they are also buying the responsibility and the requirement for support ongoing. Yeah, you if know. nobody does, I'll yeah. I mean, we, we look after sites for five, seven years, and, you know, we look at stuff that we wrote two years ago, and, like, you know, <laughs> self-loathing, you know, going, whoa! <laughs> you know, why did I do that? Um, and this is a really obvious, blunt instrument for just dealing with that, right? Because you, you're getting the eyes on it early, um, it's out there, and you don't have these like secret little piles of shame that you've hidden somewhere, <laughs> and, and you have to deal with. It's the same that many eyes make the shadow. Yeah. Just, just yeah. To, to give you a different perspective, kind of client side. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Brisbane City Council, and mm -hmm. in our digital roadmap, uh, one of our principles is uh, open source community leader. Mm -hmm. And so we actually have briefs that go out with the agencies we work with, where we say that we expect that the modules that will be developed will be contributed back to the community. Yeah, nice. It's, it's uh, you know, awesome. Um, we've found that our clients tend to kind of polarise towards two extremes, right? We have our, uh, our not-for-profit and our government agency clients who have a mandate um, and are really happy to push open source and, you know, it's not their money so they don't feel quite, you know, they, they have more of a, a public mandate. And then we have our more commercial clients who don't who don't don't, don't care. They just want a result, right? They're, they're paying, you know, for a result. And um, that issue of proprietary IP or you know special methods was more of a fear than a reality for us. Um, and then you know it's it's like any client thing, right? If it comes down to it and the client really objects, it's about a discussion and then a decision about your relationship. And for us, the cost and, and the tears of maintaining a, a, a massive legacy code base is just not worth it. Just not worth it. Alex? Just a really quick uh, comment. Um, it's been very, very inspiring. And you know, we don't tend to make, publish many modules because we don't tend to write many, like yourself, or avoid mm -hmm. at any cost. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have realized the low hanging fruit for us is to contribute our things, uh, especially Drupal 8. Yep. And I'm just nice. wondering if you've got a strategy around that. No. <laughs> Have a thought about it. The whole theme discussion is that's just a whole other can of hornets. So, you know, um, yeah. so how have the community involvement in this, like Drupal community on the grand scale, uh, how are they contributing these contrib modules and on your work? Uh, is there any use cases you are seeing people <coughs> doing uh, what you are not doing with your own? Yeah, I think you should be promoting the fact that this is the first time I've heard it's brilliant. So I think that there's a real publicity for the company. And, and I think uh, for broader community, uh, like, uh, I'm an active developer, uh, and I don't know all these kind of things, and where these, can, these things can kind of come handy for me. Uh, yeah. This is the reveal. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> like, hey, this this is a this is a, a, a great you know a great story to one tell. But, yeah. Sorry, one that far. Um, six weeks in, it was hard. You know, uh, you know, tears and tears and yelling um, because it, it, it was a change. But you just pushed through it, and it was good. And I think my my last comment is it's really nice to get the feedback. So thanks for that, and thanks for saying cheers because. My take coming out of the end of this is to go, why didn't we do this, you know, five years ago, ten years ago? You know, I feel, I felt ten years of shame, right, for like, <laughs> for 12 weeks of glory. Um, and I would never go back. I would never go back. Have you had any thoughts on taking this beyond Drupal? That's the last question. Oh, yeah, last question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, beyond Drupal? What's that? What's that? <laughs> No, I mean, it's just been, um, it's like, you know, um, other tools you use in the development process. You know, yeah, yes, and... yep. So um, I, I saw a great talk at Webstock two years ago, two years ago, with Brad Frost. I don't know, look it up, the talk's online, um, give it away now. And he just said, open source all your shit, everything. Um, put it all out there, all your work, all your documentation, all your proposals, all your thoughts, all your doodles. Um, you know, he's one guy that's really inspiring. Um, but you go, hey, that's a challenge. You know? um, documentation, training, how-tos, I mean, you know, we'd love to do more of that stuff. But it's really hard to do good stuff for other people. You know? it's, it's easy to do good stuff that you're satisfied with. It's really hard to do stuff that satisfies other people. So, but it's hard for me, I have to uh, yep. finish this because I'm really enjoying it. What I'm suggesting is, because this is a great conversation and we do really need this in the community, we may propose this as a buff for tomorrow. So yeah. tomorrow we could put a buff, like, cool. what is it, okay. buff there? Yeah. yeah, so we could all, like, those people who are interested, we could all come there and discuss this. And also we could continue discussing this as well, but we just need to officially yeah. uh, finish this session so we could go for uh, lunch. So two, two things, if there is someone from Brisbane or Gold Coast here, please come and see me, I, I want to get some ideas. Second, you could get your lunch from there and bring it to the balcony over there because it's not raining. Yeah. Okay, cool. thank you and yeah, feel free to see you guys. Thanks everyone.